have done the components of a compound feed. We have done the sources whereby we can get those components. Now we are ready to do a formulation of a compound feed. I know many people would want to know how to formulate all the types of feeds, but I'll give you exactly what is required in each feed and give an example of how to formulate one and then you can formulate the rest of the feed. So if you're looking to make a chick feed, If you're looking, to, if you're looking for to make feed for the small birds from day one, and a chick mash is given to chicks that are zero eight zero weeks to eight weeks, you need to have proteins values. of about 20 to 23 percent so we are saying that in a thousand kgs of the feed 20 percent of that feed of that feed is protein so if you are making a hundred kgs of feed 20 percent of the hundred So we are saying that 20 kgs of the components should be giving proteins. So that is what you, you understand by when we talk about the protein value. So if you are providing protein from soya, protein from, uh, from omena, protein from meat and bone meal, you should ensure that both are giving just 20% that you can be able to have that. Then that food should also contain energy or what we call the carbohydrates normally the carbohydrates being the major source of energy they should be 70 percent so if you are making a hundred kgs of feeds so 70 over 100 times 100 so it means that 70 kgs of that food should be the cereal or your source of energy whatever source of energy that you have will be provided by 70 percent so it's important to note that these two give us the, the major components of the food now having had 70 and 20 now we have 90 kgs isn't it so if you're making 100 kgs it means that the rest of the 10 kgs now is what we call the vitamins and minerals. That's why when I was talking about the components that make a compound feed, I said the vitamins and minerals are required in very small quantities. So both of them will have just 10% of the feed. Now, the chikma should contain 20 to 23 percent of the feed. So if, if you're doing a chic match, this is all you require to do the percentages. If you're doing a grower's match, chic, I hope you're all now together with the chic match, written somewhere the percentages. If you're doing food for the growing birds, what we normally call, call the grower's mash. This is the feed that is fed to the birds from the eight weeks to 16 weeks. This is the simplest feed that we have in the market. Everybody is able to make this because it's very simple. So the protein should be 14 to 15 percent so if you're making a hundred kgs of feed you just do 14 over 100 multiplied by a hundred that means that the protein would be only 14 kgs can go as high as 15 you'll not be wrong if you do 15. this is the reason why the protein is less in the growers mash is because we had provided a lot of protein in the chick so 
all the organs had been formed. So now what you're doing is to grow the muscle, the tissues now. So if you go wrong in the cheeks, you will not be able to achieve your onset of laying in the layer's bud. Because if you don't provide the 20% protein in the cheek, it means that when you come to the growers and the protein is very low, you will not be able to achieve what you're looking for. If the protein should be only 14 to 15%, the energy, you can't keep it at 60%. So you can have 60 kgs. You realize that when you're, doing, when you're doing the growers much, the energy is less because those birds have had, you don't have a lot of proteins, so you don't require a lot of energy to break down the protein. And also you do not want your birds to grow so fat that they are not able to lay during the onset of laying. If you have 60 plus 14, you'll have 74. Meaning that now in this case, 26% of the feed will be in minerals plus the vitamins. When we reach at this time, farmers ask me why is now the provision of the minerals and and the vitamins more in the grower's bud. Remember, this bud is now growing. So we have developed the organs, but we need them to grow. I told you the minerals and the vitamins, their work is to help in the metabolism, meta, in the metabolism of the or metabolic system of the body. So at this time is when the bud is very active. You have developed the organs, but you need the organs to grow. The reproductive organs needs the, cerebr the, the brain to help it to grow. You need the release of the, ho of the hormones that are assisted by the minerals and the, and the vitamins for, for, the, for their release. So you need to provide all these vitamins and minerals that the hormones will be released for the development of the reproductive system. You also need a lot of minerals and vitamins for the mobility of the bird. Remember this is a time when the bird is moving around, jumping around, so you need to provide a lot of minerals for the, the calcium, for the mobility of the bird. This bird, when it works a lot, the skeletal muscles need to be maintained very well. And th at this time when you start seeing the birds getting now paralysis, if the minerals are not enough. This one you realize at this stage, that's when you start seeing birds getting fatigued if they're in the cage because the minerals that have been provided are not the same. So the proteins and the carbohydrates are less, but the vitamins and the minerals now increase because we need the metabolic system of the body to be now fastened. Now let's go to the layer bud. We have now grown our bud from the cheek. It has gone to the growing stage and now we have the layer bud. The layer bud is a, is a bud that is now lay. And the feed that we make is called the layer smash. The layer smash should be given to the bud from 16 weeks technically to the time when you sell or when you sell out your bud. Technically, it should be 16 weeks. But for the economic purposes, don't give your buds lay as much until when they have given 10% eggs. It is of no economic value to give a bud that is 16 weeks, yet it is not laying. But if you feed your bud well, you'll be able to find the first two eggs during the 16th week. By the time they are 17 weeks, you have already achieved 10% laying. But technically, nutritionally, we say that the layer smash should be given to a bird from 16 weeks. But don't give your bird layer smash until they have given you an egg. So what the co composition of the layer smash? The proteins. The proteins should be 16 to 17 percent. 
the protein should be 16 17 percent what we say by 16 17 percent is that if you are making a hundred kgs of of feed so 16 over 100 times 100 so in that way you'll have 16 kgs of the feed being provided for by the protein the carbohydrates or the sources of energy they should be high like the chick it should be 70 percent So in layers, the proteins plus the carbohydrates add up to 86. So we are left with vitamins plus minerals occupying 14%. The reason why the, the also the minerals and the and the protein and the and the vitamins are higher in the layers is because the minerals are now being required in high percentages. This bud is laying. As the bud lays, the shell requires calcium, and the bud also requires calcium for its skeletal muscles. So the minerals should be high, the calcium levels should be high. I said that this time you should maintain the calcium to phosphorus high levels as 16 is to 1. The minerals now also because this bud is a mature bud, the metabolism system should be very constant. Otherwise your laying will not be constant. So it's very important to note that during the cheek match, the minerals require just 10%. In the cheek, it's six, in the growers, 16, and in the layers, it's 14%, while the rest is as I thought before. So now, having understood what is required, we can now look at the Kianyeji meal that we are making. We have done technically the layer bud, but I know some farmers have the Kianyeji bud. We are calling it the Kienyeji mash or the indigenous mash. Okay, this bud, we are still doing a research on the proper formulation of a mash of a Kienyeji, but we are equivalenting the, the Kienyeji bud to be given the same feed as the grower's mash, the grower's bud. The reason why we are equivalenting the Kienyeji mash to the growers mash nutritionally is because this bud is supplemented a lot. Farmers are able to do supplementation by provision of the vitamins, not in the synthetic matter but from the greens. Normally these buds are on semi-intensive so they are freely walking around so for the for the for the kienyeji mash when i do personally when i do the kienyeji mash i equivalent it to the growers mash and i don't go wrong because if the farmer is able to supplement the provision of the protein the provision of the vitamins we we don't go wrong because if you do 14% of the of the proteins and the farmer supplements so the other 2% they are able to achieve that so technically uh, nutritionally i would say that the kienyeji mash would be equivalent to a growers mash because it is not an exotic bird but also a developing bird can normally a kienyeji a kienyeji farmer would want the chicks to grow very fast like the exotic chicks. There's no harm if you do if you buy or you make a kienye, a chick mash and give it to the kienyeji bud. They will or the feed is not going to harm them and they will grow fast because actually basically what we are looking for is the faster growth of the bud. 
but you can ask from the growing stage to the laying stage to the cell, you can adopt the growers mash throughout the period of the bud. So let's now see how we can formulate a simple meal of a hundred buds.